Jezebel's spirit, watch this brothers, listen good. She's generally somewhat attractive. The Jezebel spirit always marries a weak-minded man. The Jezebel spirit hates the men of God. You follow, that's another level. You follow a man following a woman. That's a, no, that's a deep level. That's why it's hard to come up out of that thing. I just want to show you the video. With, with the black woman who has a big mouth, and I want you to watch this video. <laughs> then we're going to talk about it just a little bit. Viewer discretion is advised. Oh, I'm your mouth. Yeah, girl. Yeah, you're in the queue on the bus, that's a suit. You and your bitch. I'll bring my daughter up here and whoop your... I'll bring my granddaughter up here. Okay, well bring them, nigga. Bring your mammy up here, bitch, and I'll be her ass, too. Oh, shit. Nigga, I'll go up that house, too, nigga. Look like somebody done sliced your face up. Oh, you mother... Your face up. Bitch, somebody... Oh! You're going to jail now. Okay, what's up, nigga? You're going to jail. Where are you going, nigga? you going to jail. Now, let's get um her reply. They interviewed her. Oh, let, they interviewed her. There's more. Just watch, watch the interview, watch what she says. That's her, that's her with the scar on her face. Because I was so hysterical at the time. 25-year-old Shadia Lane of Cleveland says she was getting on an RTA bus to go to work September 18th when... He didn't think I had any money to get on the bus, and I was looking for it, trying to tell him I have money to get on the bus. Can you just let me find it, you know? And then from there, it just escalated. To this. Captured on a cell phone. And the bus driver that delivered the blow, 59-year-old artist Hughes of East Cleveland. It's amazing to see how a man would actually hit a woman that hard. You know what I'm saying? Like, are you serious? You could have, you know, pulled me off the bus. I, you can't even touch nobody, but for real, like, you re really punched me. Yeah, but Shadia, you were on the receiving end of one of the most talked about uppercuts. What did that feel like? I was on mortar combat. It just hurt it. I was on mortar combat. I was on mortar combat. Finish her. Oh, Prepare to die. <laughs> Bus driver wins. Flawless victory. Fatality. Like it was like a up finish him. You know what I'm saying? Type of hit. Now this all went down on the number five bus going up chagrin. And according to the RTA, the bus driver has been with the company for 22 years. Meantime, the RTA has released a statement saying, upon identifying the driver, he was immediately suspended and removed from duty. His behavior is absolutely unacceptable. RTA apologizes to our customers for this incident. But who is not apologizing? There's two people involved in this. What can you say about your role? Did you hit him? No, see, 
I, that's why I want to talk to my lawyer. I don't really want to, I can't answer that question. What can you say about your role? Did you hit him? No, see, I, that's why I want to talk to my lawyer. I don't really want to, I can't answer that question. I can't answer that question. I'm sorry, but no. it's more to that. It's not just like, it's more to that. But Lane does admit that two wrongs do not make a right. And she says she's changed. And if something like that escalates, I will just remove myself quickly. You know what I'm saying? Instead of even having a, he, the decency to even have a conversation with the guy. Well, already then. So now you notice when they asked her, did you hit him? She said, I can't answer that. My lawyer told me not to answer that. Well, Danita, nearly 100 people, including fellow bus drivers and union workers, turned out here to support 59-year-old artist Hughes here at the Beachwood Police Department. This all happened this afternoon. Hughes turned himself in just a short time ago. He is facing assault charges for allegedly punching a female passenger. The video was captured by another passenger on that bus and appears to show 25-year-old Shadea Lane pushing Hughes. And then the video shows he retaliates with a punch. Hughes has been suspended without pay while this investigation continues. Mr. Hughes, how does it feel to have all this support when you did this today? It's real heartwarming. It's heartwarming to know that my brothers are behind me. That's all it's about. As long as we stick together. Like said. He wants his job back. He didn't want this to happen. He wants his job back to go back out there doing what he knows what to do. For the last 25 years or more, for what Brother Hughes know to do is drive that bus and put bread and food on his table for his family. You know, I was trying to do my job, and I was doing my job to the best of my ability. From 25 years of doing it, I know how that job is done, and I know how the company reacts to certain things. You know, but it was wrong. It was wrong for, for someone to do me the way that they did me, the way that RTA terminated me for doing my job where they were supposed to be behind me. Now, we're going to get into our lesson now. Today's lesson is identifying the Jezebel spirit. Ooh, 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 ooh. Identifying the Jezebel spirit. Some of y'all don't know about Jezebel. Y'all should have read that thing in Kings. All you, who, who not married up in here? Raise your hand, who not married? All you brothers not married, y'all need to read about Jezebel. We're gonna touch on it today. We're gonna start off first. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna start off with E first, with Genesis 3, let's start there. I'm gonna show you the problem. Now, give me Genesis uh, 2 and 7 first. Let's start there. Oh boy. Genesis 2 and 7. This is the problem with the nation of Israel, blacks and Latinos. We have followed the white man so far, we've ended up in hell. Women telling us what to do, kids kicking our behind. Most of says, no, this shall not be. Genesis 2 verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. So this man, Adam, the first man, was a black man was breathed into his nostrils the breath of life was God's laws. Adam had supreme rulership over every bit of God's creation. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Our king is Christ. He's our leader. Go ahead. And the head of the woman is the man. The man is the leader of the woman. And the hey, hey, woo, 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 woo. Can't run by that. Okay. Some brothers right now got scared and put their heads down. You brothers who are fearful of that thing, because that's a lot of fights come up out of that verse. You get a, in a lot of these quote unquote religious women that y'all find in Jehovah Witness Church, mm -hmm. Seventh day Adventist, Catholic, when you read that to them, there's going to be a fight. Mm -hmm. They say, Oh, I love the Lord. They, they don't love Jesus. They love the white man, but they don't love Jesus. That's the person they call him Jesus, the white man. <laughs> That's what they call him. They're saying I love Jesus, but it's the white man that they love. Yeah, the damn devil. They give him no problems. <laughs> because but even when this, in that clip, there was a part where she says, I'm going to get my man. Mm -hmm. And then she says, call 911. Mm -hmm. That I don't know. Wait a minute. I thought she said she's gonna get her man. Yeah. Then she she yelled out, "Call 911." She 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 her man, her she man was the devil. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah to, to back up what you said, Elder Nathaniel, I pick up a young lady. So I start talk to her about the scripture. She's told me. She's saying that I'm not gonna submit under no man. 
this is what she said. I said, but sister, the Bible said, she said, oh yeah, yeah I do that. <laughs> I said, but the creation see that. You have to submit. She's saying that she will not submit under no man. Right. Now, wait a minute now, if you don't mind. <laughs> when they say that, they're not talking about not being under no man. They're saying they don't want to be under you. Right. They don't have a problem being under the white man at all. Oh, no. As a matter of fact, they prefer that. That's right. I'm going to just tell it straight. They prefer that thing. They give him no lip, no back talk, no nothing. It's complete submission and harmony. When it comes to you, all of a sudden, you got to pull every verse out the Bible, and then they still don't hear it. I'm telling you straight. I'm telling you. That's, that's the deal. Exactly. Now, from there. Yep. Go down to verse, is it verse 8 I want? Yep. Go ahead. Verse Corinthians 11, verse 8. Verse 8. For the man is not of the woman. Brothers, you were not made of woman. I don't care if you came out of your mama's stomach. From the beginning, Paul is letting you know. From the time of creation, from the beginning, you did not come from a woman. Read again. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. In the creation, God created her from you. She's a part of you. She came from you. She was created based on you. Go ahead. Neither was the man created for the woman. Now some of you brothers think y'all was made to serve her. <laughs> Read what he said again. Neither was the man created for the woman. You were not created to serve her. That's what he's talking about. Because you had a lot of brothers in Corinth had it twisted. <laughs> like they got these Eddie Long churches. And these Creflo Dollar churches. Israelite churches. And some Israelite churches, right. Go ahead. But the woman for the man. The woman was created to serve you. Read it again. So in cases uh, we mm -hmm. misunderstood something. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. Do y'all see that? Who's confused about that? Ah, uh, see, ain't nobody raising their hand. Uh huh. Yep. Who understands that? Raise your hand. Uh huh. <laughs> we yeah, okay. We gonna see. All you problematic brothers with your wife. Brother, you don't understand what she put me through. <laughs> Let's go to Genesis 3. Watch that. I'm going to show you about Eve in the beginning. Identifying the Jezebel spirit. Now remember, Adam was made Lord of the earth. He His job was to name everything. Every creature put them in order. That was his, that was his job. Genesis 3 and 1. Watch this. Come on. Genesis 3 verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now let's stop right there. I know some of you right now talk thinking a snake came to Eve having a conversation. <laughs> what did the American Indians, the tribe of Gad, call the so-called white man? Snake. A snake. Can we get that in Corinthians? Yeah. 2 Corinthians 11 and yeah. 3 and 4. See, a lot of people get upset. Y'all know, they got these new Bibles out called the Woman's Bible. Mm -hmm. Anybody see them things? It's an abomination. An abomination. Because the feminist movement is angry because the Bible is directed towards who? Yeah. Men. Because it's directed towards men for a reason. Because men are the leaders of the... God, in case you didn't know, God Almighty is a what? Man. A man. I did, yeah. I, did, I did some research also, and I was going into the history of where pants came into, into play for women. It says that the, that the feminist movement, that they were completely against the letters of Paul. They hated Paul's letters. That they were denounced all the New Testament entirely because of all the things that Paul said concerning the women. Right. During the feminist movement, um, during Amelia Bloomer and Susan B. Anthony, they were the main ones that hated Paul with a passion. All right, no, no, 1900s. Exactly. Can, can, can we get Ezekiel 34, the last verse I think it is? Is, is that what I want? The flock of my passion. Yes. Yes. 34, 31. Because I see there's some new brothers in here. Y'all might not know that. Y'all might, y'all, because some of y'all grow up and y'all go, the woman is more spiritual than the man. Look at all the churches with all those women. That's because the devil's up in there. And the devil has beguiled the woman. Can I say something real quick? And the, like the elder just brought out, he said uh, they're coming out with this feminist version of the Bible, right? That's yeah. what it's called. This the woman's Bible. The, the woman's Bible. The people that run this society, listen to me good. The people that run this society, the white men that run the society, them Bibles are not going to them women, to their women. Right.
They give those Bibles to the simple boneheaded women, our women. That's who they give those Bibles to. They're not going to read that mess because that'll mess up their order. Exactly. The white man cannot run the society if his woman is not supporting him. Right. So they're not going to mess his own woman's mind up with that mess. He'll give it to our women, yeah. but he ain't going to give it to their women. Their women is in complete submission, complete understanding, complete support. No lip, no back talk, no nothing. Exactly. That's, he gets a good night's sleep so he can wake up and rule the world the next day. Yep. I'm over in uh, Queens one day driving through. And I see in, a black, in Jamaica, in Hollis, I see a lot of black women, uh, Latin women, doing the Jehovah Witness things. And I drove over to, where'd I go? Bensonhurst, in the white neighborhoods. I didn't see no white Jehovah Witnesses knocking on nobody's door. That only happens where we live, to indoctrinate our people. Give me that, read that. Ezekiel 34, verse 31. And ye my flock, the flock of my pasture, are men. Oh, what? Amen. Oh, what? Amen. Do y'all hear what God says? No, get mad with that. Get mad with that. Let's go back to 2 Corinthians 11. God said the flock of his pastor are men. There's an order in the kingdom. God is going to set up his government on earth, and it's going to be order. But I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve, as the serpent tricked Eve, through his subtlety, through his craftiness, his trickery, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Oh, read it again. Read it again. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. In Christ, it's simple. He's a black messiah for the nation of Israel. That's it. And their structure in order. God, Christ, man, woman. It's a simple thing to understand. But for some ungodly reason, our people keep getting it twisted and get mad when you reinforce what God says. You become the enemy to them. Mm -hmm. How many women ran up out of here mad? About six, seven? Yeah, six, six. Just mad. Ah! Mm -hmm. They wanted to rule the husbands. Mm -hmm. Tell the husband what to do. Shut up, nigga. Go over there. Sit down. Wash the dishes. When I, she gonna tell her husband, when I get home, you better have this house clean. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? When I get home, you better have dinner on the table. Are you kidding? And they both coming from work. That's an abomination. That is an abomination. And brothers was going for that thing. Mm -hmm. And when we brought out the scriptures, the woman got angry. We became the enemy of life. Now we're called angry clones. Right, now, yeah, angry clones we're called now. Let's read that again. But I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Come on. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus. If he that comes preaches another Jesus. Did somebody come and preach another Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, the white man came and taught us white man Jesus. Come on. Whom we have not preached. Because the apostles never preached about a Caucasian man. Loved us and died for us. That's not in the Bible. Go ahead. Or if you receive another spirit. Have we received another spirit? Yes. yes, we men now have a feminine spirit. Mm -hmm. They say, don't talk so rough. Mm -hmm. Talk like this. Mm -hmm. Talk like Joel Osteen and say, God loves us, mm -hmm. everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Which ye have not received. Or another gospel. Or another gospel. We have received another gospel. They said, no, 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 no. God didn't just die for God loved the Israelites. He loves all nations. All nations are accepted. That's another gospel. Come on. Which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. And the way we bear with him is tear their behinds up with the scriptures. <laughs> Cuss them out with the word of God and let them know you are a liar. Now jump down to verse 14. 13. Verse 13. For such are false apostles. When you see that white painting of Michelangelo that Michelangelo painted with Christ, a white Jesus and 12 apostles, read it again. But such are false apostles. Deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Right. From the time of the Renaissance, the white man portrayed himself as Christ and the apostles. And many of our people believe that that's the real Jesus and the real apostles. Come on. And no marvel. Watch this. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. He's transformed into what? An angel of light. I want you all to pay close attention to this. Read the verse again. And no marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Go ahead. 
Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. So now, when Satan can't, comes, he comes as an angel of light. He does not come like a, a snake running his mouth. He comes like an angel of light. You, you look at him and go, this man has all wisdom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to Genesis because that's what Paul is addressing. Go back to Genesis 3 now. Genesis 3 verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Now this is all hip talk. That's right. The hard, one of the hardest chapters to understand is Genesis 3 right here. It's all written in a metaphor. Come on. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now the first thing you need to acknowledge is that he came to the woman. He did not go to the man. Because guess what? When you go, in a, when you go to fight in an army, what do you look for to overcome first? Do you look for the strongest part of the army to fight or the weakest link? The weakest link. Satan said, ah, uh, he looked at Adam and Eve, he said, mm, let me deal with that woman right there. Because remember, God dealt directly with Adam. He breathed into Adam the breath of life. Adam's job was to teach the woman. He said, I can't go to the man. He got too, too much powers on that dude. Let me go to that woman, who's supposed to be listening to him, but I see a little rebellion in there. I'm going to go to her. Watch this. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Now she's talking about literal trees. Trees, come on. But the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat of it. Now this tree in the midst of the garden is not a literal tree. Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon, please. I'm going to show you what this first sin is. This first sin that's in the midst of the garden. For the worshipping of idols. The worshipping of idols. Not to be named. Is the beginning. 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 The cause, the cause, and the end of all evil. Of all evil. So here, they're letting you know the beginning of sin was idolatry. Idolatry. Give me Deuteronomy 4 and 19, I believe it is. Is that it? Yep. You know I'm shooting from yep. the hip again. Deuteronomy 4 verse 19. Unless thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven. Unless you lift up your eyes unto heaven. And when thou seest the sun, and when you see the sun, and the moon, and the moon, and the stars, and the stars, even all the host of heaven, even all the host of heaven, the constellations, should us be, should us be driven to worship them, should us be driven to worship them. God told Moses and the Israelites, I don't want you to lift up your eyes to heaven and worship what you see. Let's go back to Genesis 3 now. And we in verse 3. Genesis 3 and 3. Genesis, Genesis 3 verse 3. Listen to what Eve says. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. In the midst of the garden. Now she's talking about the heavens. That's what she's talking about. Go ahead. God has said, ye shall not eat of it. Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Watch this. And the serpent said unto the, to the woman, ye shall not surely die. See how Satan said, no, 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 no. You won't die. You will not die. That's what Satan said to the woman. Watch this. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. And when it's talking about eating this knowledge, it's talking about learning. The day you learn this understanding that I'm going to show you, God knows your eyes will be opened. Go ahead. And ye shall be as gods. And ye. What does ye translate to? You. You. You shall be as what? Gods. Gods. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's pause there. You're getting heavy, brother. Let's pause there. Let me show you what God said about men. Give me Psalms 82. I think it's 82, 86. 82 and 6. 82 and 6. 82 and 6. I want all you men to listen good to this because you don't know where you're at. I have said, ye are gods. The Most High said to you, you are gods. Come on. And all of you are the children of the Most High. Come on. But ye shall die like men. But because of our sins, the Most High said we shall die like men. Was that it? And fall like one of the princes. And we shall fall like one of the princes of the other nations. So we wanted that. I wanted to show you that the Most High established the Israelites as gods upon the earth. But because of sin, we went into slavery. He took that power from us. Let's go back to Genesis 3. Let's look at let's look and see what Satan was saying to Eve here. Could you get another scripture? I don't know if you got it marked down. What? Uh, uh, 2nd Ezra 6 and 54. You got that marked? No. 
There's a reason why he won. Go ahead, get that second Ezra six fifty four. Because you just you just read him read about the gods, right? And the gods was talking about the men. That's what it was talking about. Well, let's see if that's exactly what it's talking about. Fifty five is it? Six fifty five is this one line? I don't need more. What does it say? And after these. Yeah, fifty four. Fifty four. Second Ezra six fifty four. Listen. Second Ezra six verse fifty four. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures. Let's stop right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can take it from there. I don't need no more. So I hope y'all see that. Adam was made Lord of everything. Some of y'all think Adam was some old regular dude walking around butt naked. Adam wasn't walking around butt naked. They had clothes on. Keep letting the white man deceive you with that Michelangelo crap. Go back to Genesis 3. <laughs> he was Tarzan. Yeah. <laughs> Genesis 3 and 4, watch this. Genesis 3 verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Well, I got news for y'all. Adam was already what? A god. Adam was already a god. So he's addressing that to the woman. She was not on a god level. But the serpent tricked her. You can be equal and or above Adam. That was the temptation. That was the temptation he gave to Eve. Ye shall be as gods. Adam was already on the God level. He dealt directly with the Most High. Yes, who had the hand up? That was our idolatry right there. Right. Absolutely. All right, come on, and watch you, this. And you wonder why there's, there's so much in allegiance with him. Watch this. What verse you at now? Verse 6. Come on. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, meaning understanding, learning. Go ahead. And that it was pleasant to the eye. So I want y'all to notice that. It was something she could see. She could learn. Okay, that's why I went, took y'all to Deuteronomy 4. I took you to Wisdom of Solomon. Something that you can see that's pleasant to the eyes, beautiful to behold. Yeah. Go ahead. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. This tree, which you look up and can see, could make you wise. Exactly. That's why a lot of people get into astrology, the horoscope, they, and they go, what sign are you? You a Capricorn? That means you're like this. What sign are you? You a Cancer? Or you got this kind of personality. That's the remnants of all that foolishness. Come on. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her. And he did eat. So now she went to Adam with the foolishness. He didn't correct her, being simple. Mm -hmm. And he learned it too. Mm -hmm. And the most I got mad at both of them. So I'm going to just end that part there and get further to the next part of the lesson. We'll go into this another time. Now, Sirach 2626. So the first thing you got to acknowledge, I want you to see, write this down. When identifying that Jezebel spirit, her spirit wants to be equal or above yours. Yep. That's the first thing you got to look at. Because if the men and women are not in their proper order, there's going to be a whole lot of death. The Most High ain't bringing in no masculine women or no feminine men. He ain't rolling like that. A woman that honoreth her husband shall be judged wise of all. That's what God's looking for. But watch this. For she that dishonoreth him in her pride shall be counted ungodly of all. That's the state of a lot of our women today. That second half, but she that dishonoreth him in her pride, she got too much pride to acknowledge you are the Lord in her life. Oh, did I say something wrong? The Bible says Adam was what? Lord of all, all God's creatures. Can we get, give me that first Peter's, uh, was it three? First Peter's three, verse six. Watch this. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. Sarah obeyed Abraham and called Abraham Lord. Go ahead. Whose daughters ye are. Whose daughters you Israelite women are. As long as ye do well. As long as you obey God's commandments. So, Sarah called Abraham Lord. All that goes back to Genesis chapter 3 with Adam and Eve. Come on. A woman that honoreth her husband shall be judged wise of all. That's what God's looking for. The woman that honors her husband. Not only does she honor him when he's rich, she honors him when he's poor. You know why I said that, huh? You'll get some woman, she'll do right by you as long as you got money coming in. Let the finances go wrong and watch the real her 
come out. Oh, you ain't got no money? I can't buy a 19th pair of shoes? You're going to see the real hug. She was only with you. And you brothers that go around hooking up with women with money just because you got me, y'all simple as hell. You wait till that money go. You're going to catch hell. Showing show her what you got. I told y'all when I first started uh, going out with my wife, I said, you know what? I should take her everywhere. I said, I ain't got no more money. You take me out. I wanted to see what her mind was. See if she was just a nigga. <laughs> she took me everywhere. I said, all right. This might be the one. Right. But that's what you got to do. Keep spending everything on her. And then when you lose yourself, she's like bouncing on you. Read that again. <laughs> a woman that honoreth her husband shall be judged wise of all. But she that dishonoreth him in her pride shall be counted ungodly of all. Right. In her pride, because she got a, so much pride. This type of woman God hates. In her pride. She looking at the Joneses. Her girlfriend might have a Bentley, a Maserati to drive. You and your man got a hoopty, or you might be taking a bus. And she mad. She angry at you because you don't have what they got. You don't know how that family got that thing. She got two pair of shoes and her girlfriend got 26 pair of shoes. You got one closet. Her girlfriend got three walk-in closets. But that's pride. The most high hates that thing. Okay? From there. So now, in her pride, this woman in her pride, this Jezebel, right? This the, in her pride, she hates what we read in 1 Corinthians 1 to 3. Verse 3, was it? Was it verse 3? 11, verse 3. 11, verse 3. About that order of God. I'm going to show you another scripture she hates. Ephesians 4, 5, 22. Ephesians 5, verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. So in a evil woman with the Jezebel spirit hates that verse. Read it again, powerful and strong. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. As unto the Lord. Women in their pride despise that thing. I'm stealing first with the Israelite woman. I know the crack is speak easy for the Christian women. I grew up with them all my life. They hate that thing. But now you Israelite women that claim you've repented and you are changed. Read it again for them. They'll hate you for reading. Mm -hmm. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. I hope all you Israelite women hear this thing. Proverbs... 15 and 10. This is about a man who hates correction, but the same goes true for the woman. I want y'all to watch this. Proverbs 15 verse 10. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. That's that woman. Like you show her the scripture. She arguing with you. You give her Ephesians 5 22 and say, listen, stop all this foolish battle you got going on here. <laughs> Read it again. <laughs> correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. Correction is grievous to him that forsakes the way. So when you and your wife are fighting and you end an argument with a scripture and she want to, cause you know some of them, they must get what? The last word. The last, it's amazing how we all know that. <laughs> they must get the last word. That's Satan, That's Satan in them. Saying I'm equal or above you. You're not gonna get the last word. So that's that pride, that's that grief, that's that, read it again. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. Was that it? And he that hateth reproof shall die. He that hates reproof shall die. So sisters, if you got that Jezebel spirit lingering on you and you hate this correction, you shall die. Because when a man decides to get his mind right and come with the word of God, you're going to get a lot of opposition. And it's not first from the white man, it's from your own flesh and blood, your wife, your mama, your daughter, your sister. It's going to be the feminine side of you that opposes the word of God first. Watch this. First Thessalonians 4 verse 8. He therefore that despiseth. He therefore that despises, meaning hates. Despiseth not man. Your hatred is not against man, sister. But God. But God. Who have also given unto us his Holy Spirit. Because we're coming with the Bible. The Bible. The Bible. The Bible is the medicine for the healing of our nation. And she's angry because you brought out the scripture. You become the enemy. Yeah. Because you're trying to deliver our soul from captivity. You become the enemy. Because believe it or not, a lot of our women want to stay in Babylon. 
100%. They love Babylon, with a land which is the land of confusion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. They love the world that Satan promised them. That's what it is. They love this. It, this is the only place where they're gonna have the the the, the imagination of their mind that they're alone. Let's identify another part of the Jezebel spirit. I ain't get to Jezebel herself yet. I'm just taking baby steps. I'm getting to that demon. First Corinthians 14, 33. What y'all gonna learn about women that got the Jezebel spirit? They love confusion. Yeah. yeah. That's why they like Babylon. And crying. And yes, the emotionalism, the tears. Brothers, don't fall for it. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand. First Corinthians 14, verse 33. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. You know? Come on. Let your women. I need you to read it together. 30, okay. Read that. Sure. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Let your women keep silence in the churches. Why? For this. Why? Not Why? Elio. So they're the main ones that bring confusion? They're the main ones that come with confusion. But I don't understand. Why can't women be the teachers up in here? I don't see in America. We can teach. Women prophesy. We can rule. We can prophesy. We can do. No. We have gifts. We win. <laughs> Shut up. And as tough as some of y'all think you are, if you allow them to speak long enough, they will confuse you. Mm -hmm. We've seen it happen. Mm -hmm. Men now were strong in the spirit. The woman just keep in the air, keep in the air. Now yep. you look like a damn fool. Exactly. Yeah. Read that again. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. The law commands the woman to be silent and be obedient. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. For it's a shame for women to speak in the church. So Paul said, let them ask their husbands at home. So if they're sitting in the church, they can sit there and learn and listen. If they got questions, the law says you go home and ask your husband. Why? Because the law says what? What does the law say? I want the law. Levi, where can I read about that law? Uh, Genesis 3.16. Let's get that. Genesis 3.16. In case there's some doubting... Jezebel's online. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. That's the menstrual when it get pains and childbearing. Okay, when they're having a baby. Go ahead. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband. Your desire shall be to your husband. And he shall rule over thee. Write that word down. Rule. R-U-L-E. I know some of y'all scared to even write the word down. I don't want my wife to see this when we get home. You simple. So that's what God says, okay? Right. Now, the reason why he went to the scripture, because we read, what did you read out of that scripture before? First Corinthians 14. Yeah, read that statement again. So we don't lose the thought. 1435. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians 14, I mean, verse 34. 34. Right. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. But they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. Read. This is the next one. That's what I want. And the if they will one. learn anything. And if they will learn anything. Let them ask their husbands at home. Let them ask their husbands at home. They're supposed to be asking. They ain't supposed to be no quiet. Right. They're supposed to have questions. They want. I want to learn the Bible. They're supposed to come to you to ask questions about the Bible. Not sit in the doggone house and be silent. Yes. They're supposed to open this. They're supposed to have questions yes. about what this Bible is saying. And they're supposed to ask you for it. That's right. That's the order. That I hope, Who does not? Which man does not understand that order? Raise your hand. I know some of y'all scared right now. But it's okay. Now, from there, let's go to 1 Kings 21. Now we're going to get to the demon herself. All right. One thing about Jezebel, I want you to write this down. The Jezebel spirit always marries a weak-minded man. She looks for a man she can control and manipulate. See that bus driver? That woman would never marry him. No. He, she'd be like, Jezebel will not marry that bus driver. Jezebel spirits always marry weak men. And they generally look for weak men who have some kind of authority. They look for that. 
Okay, I, w I want you to write that down. And she looks for a man with authority so she can operate through him. Watch this, 1 Kings 21 and 1. 1 Kings 21 verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard which was in Jezreel, hard by the palace of Ahab king of Samaria. When it says hard by the palace, it means it was adjacent to it. It was attached to it. Go ahead. And Ahab spake unto Naboth saying, give me thy vineyard that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house. So Naboth said, I want your vineyard. Let me have it. Let me buy it from you. Come on. And I will call, and I will give it to thee for a better vineyard than it. Or if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. And Naboth said to Ahab, the Lord forbid it me, that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. And Ahab came unto, into his house heavy and displeased because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my father. So notice he went into his house heavy and displeased. Y'all see that, right? Watch this, come on. And he laid him down upon his bed. Notice, he laid on his bed, he's depressed. I want y'all to see the spirit on this man. Now this man, what is his position? King. He's king. He goes home heavy and depressed because he couldn't get where his way. And he laid him down upon his bed, and he turned away his face and would eat no bread. Wait, stop. What kind of man is this? He couldn't get his way. He go home depressed and don't want to eat. <laughs> this is a weak man. A crybaby, a mama's boy, and he can't. Go ahead. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said unto him, why is this thy spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread? He sat on the bed. Come on. And he said unto her, Because I spake unto Naboth the Jezreelite, and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else, if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. And Jezebel his wife said unto him, Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat bread, and let thine heart be merry. I will give thee, I will give thee the vineyard of the Baal, the Jezreelite. You hear that? She said, I'm going to get it for you. Because this type of woman wants to be in command, in charge. Watch this, come on. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name. Oh, see, that's why it has to be a man with some kind of authority. She will speak through him as if she's him. Watch that spirit. Go ahead. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal and sent the letters unto the elders to the, and to the nobles that were in his city, dwelling with Naboth. And she wrote, and she wrote in the letters, saying, Proclaim a fast, and set Naboth on high among the people, and set two men, sons of Belial, before him, to bear witness against him, saying, Thou didst blaspheme God and the king, and then carry him out and stone him that he may die. Yeah, so you see what she's doing. She said, let's proclaim a fast, so that everybody will uh, give the illusion that this is done in righteousness everybody fast because something bad is going on i can't hold it there's so much sin going on praise the lord oh god jesus that's what she's doing check it out now watch this come on and the men of his city even the elders and the nobles who were the inhabitants in his city did as jezebel had sent unto them and as it was written in the letters which she had sent unto them they proclaimed the fast and set Naboth on high among the people. And there came in two men, children of Belial, and sat before him, and the men of Belial witnessed against him, even against Naboth in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth did blaspheme God and the king, and they carried him forth out of the city, and stoned him with stones that he died. So you see what happened. She got this dude put to death. Okay, all in a seemingly uh, atmosphere of righteousness. Proclaim a fast, and uh, believe me, there was lots of tears. Oh Lord, we are here before thee. Watch that spirit. Come on. Then they sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth is stoned and is dead. And it came to pass, when Jezebel heard that Naboth was stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, which he refused to give thee for money. For Naboth is not alive, but dead. And it came to pass when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, that Ahab rose up to go to down to, to the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite to take possession so of it. So guess what? Do y'all think Ahab knew what was going on? Yes, he knew exactly what was going on. Watch this, watch verse 25. 
Verse 25. But there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness. See that? Read it again. But there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. The Jezebel spirit will stir you up. There's a lot of brothers in jail because of a Jezebel wife in their ear. You know what he said to me? She walking down the street with her cracker, her behind showing. A brother go, ugh. She gonna go get some big, a big dumb nigga she know. You know what he said to me? He cursed me out and he said this. Where he at? I'm gonna knock him out. Now, wait a minute. Now. Then a nigga get locked up and thrown in jail. Let's go to Sirach 28, 14. There's more things that that Jezebel spirit does. The Jezebel spirit, she gets her support system. She likes to backbite. She whispers behind the scenes. Sirach 28, verse 14. A backbiting tongue have disquieted many. And driven them from nation to nation. A backbiting tongue has disquieted many. She puts people at odds one against the other. That's what we read in 1 Kings 21. Go ahead. Strong cities have it pulled down and overthrown the houses of great men. A backbiting have overthrown the houses of great men, sending out text messages. Yep. And it's always directed at the leadership. This nigga is wicked because of this. I can't hold it no more. Give me Leviticus 5 and 1. I must show the scriptures to the world. Teaching privileges. <laughs> they took away my teaching privileges. Oh, come on. We you don't. Know. <laughs> A backbiting tongue have cast out virtuous women mm -hmm. and deprived them of their labor. Now, this sister tried to call herself virtuous. But in reality, she's a Jezebel. Sister, you're not no virtuous woman. Jezebel portrays herself as a virtuous woman. I'm gonna show you that as we read on. Go ahead. Verse 16. Whos Whoso hearkeneth unto it shall never find rest and never dwell quietly. From there, give me 2 Kings 9 and 30. Another thing about a Jezebel spirit. A Jezebel spirit, watch this, brothers, listen good. She's generally somewhat attractive. General. And I'm saying that for a reason. If Jezebel looked like precious, very few people would have followed her. Very few. But Jezebel has to be somewhat attractive. When you look at Juanita Bynum, very attractive sister in the face, and she can quote scriptures very well. Second Kings 9 and 30, please. Watch this. And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it. And she painted her face. She painted her face. She put on her makeup. And tied her hair. She her wrapped head. her head. Go ahead. And looked out at a window. Because she always tried to portray herself looking good and being a righteous woman. That was the spirit she had. That's the spirit of a Jezebel. So be mindful of that. First Kings 18 verse 11. Like we had said earlier about she communicates with all to get a support system. Mm -hmm. The Jezebel spirit, she will get a support system. Of, see, it ain't enough just to have women back her. She needs men to back her. Yep. Now, the men go to back her for, what, for primarily one reason. How many of y'all know what that reason is? Only Ezekiel know the reason? Oh, Lee, uh, Corey. The booty. Right, the booty. She looked good. They want to sex her. Shake what your mama gave you. Use what God blessed you with. Use your feminine wives. That's what goes on. So these women, that's why a lot of dumb niggas in jail. Because they got a good looking woman who can manipulate them. Get point the finger at another dude that disrespected her. Get Tyrone to beat him down, and then Tyrone end up in jail. She on to the next dude. No, she, yeah, she's on to the dude that she, that he beat up. First Kings eighteen and eleven. First Kings eighteen verse eleven. Watch this. And now thou sayest, go tell thy lord, behold, Elijah is here. So Elijah's telling this guy Obadiah, let your lord Ahab know that I'm here. Elijah is the prophet. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass, as soon as I am gone from thee, that the Spirit of the Lord shall carry thee whither I know not. So now Obadiah, that's his name, he's saying to Elijah, he says, if I go tell King Ahab that you're here, the Spirit of God might whisk you away somewhere, and then I'm going to get killed. Go ahead. And so when I come and tell Ahab, and he cannot find thee, he shall slay me. But I thy servant for the Lord from my youth. Watch this. Was it not told my Lord what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord? Stop. Read that part again. Was it not told my Lord what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord? Read it again. Was it not told my Lord what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord? Who is Jezebel's anger towards? 
the prophets. Uh, it ain't just men in general. It's the prophets of the Lord. Anybody that comes with the Bible, any man that comes with the Bible to correct her, you are the enemy. That's when you read, that's the history you read about Jezebel. She hated correction. She hated to be subordinate to the man. She had to be H-N-I-C, head nigga in charge. Read it again. Was it not told my Lord what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord? How I hid in a hundred men of the Lord's prophets by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water? So Obadiah went on a mission to hide the prophets because Jezebel wanted to kill every prophet of God. So write this down. The Jezebel spirit hates the men of God. She hates that thing. Go ahead. And now thou sayest, go tell thy Lord. Behold, Elijah is here, and he shall slay me. And Elijah said, as the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, I will surely show myself unto him today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab, and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. And it came to pass, when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that had trouble of Israel? Art thou he? See how Ahab is. He says the prophet of God, are you he that troubles? It's not his wife. He never, he is so weak, he never spoke out against his wife. Nope. Killing the prophets, doing all that wickedness. But he goes to the man of God. Are you the one that troubles Israel? Mm -hmm. By Elijah teaching the Bible, he's causing trouble. You hear this? That's that spirit, that weak Negro spirit. Go ahead. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel. But thou in thy father's house. See that? But you in your father's house. Go ahead. In that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. And Balaam. You, have, you have followed Balaam, the devil. Go ahead. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal 450, and the prophets of the groves 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. See that? So... Those wicked prophets of Baal ate at Jezebel's table. She looked out for those weak, evil men. Those were part of the sons of Belial that she called. What group? A support group. She had, how many total was it? 400? 450. 450 wicked men that followed her. No, 800. Was this in prophets of the groves? 400. Right. So it's a total of 850. And they have told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. And with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Because Elijah killed the prophets of Baal. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me and more also if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. So what did Jezebel do? She threatened. The Jezebel spirit is a violent spirit. The Jezebel spirit will threaten you mm -hmm. to instill fear in you. You hear things like, God showed me a dream, and you will get put to death in six days. Remember that prophecy that six, came on us? Uh, six months. Six months. That's still a lot. Jezebel gave a prophecy that we would all be put to death in six months. That was three years ago. <laughs> Woman, shut the hell up with your dreams. The Jezebel spirit loves to threaten you with death and use her dreams to try to manipulate you. Mm -hmm. Let's read this again. There's some good stuff here. Come on. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Mm. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life. And so Elijah ran. That thing worked on him. <laughs> Go ahead. And came to Bathsheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. So, from there, y'all can read the rest on your own. Let's go to 2 Kings 11 and 1. Here's the next sister. The next sister was named Athaliah. She was over the kingdom of Judah. Yep. At this time, you had Jezebel over the kingdom of Israel. Then you had over the kingdom of Judah, Athaliah. Get that, Sirach 25, 16. We're going to read that. I had rather dwell with the lion and the dragon than to keep house with the wicked woman. Let's read that again. I had rather dwell with the lion and the dragon than to keep house with the wicked woman. Some of you brothers, you know your wife is violent as hell. You don't want to say nothing else, but we know. When you at home, she's smacking you upside your head, kicking you down the stairs, calling you all kind of names. Chest we, bumping you. Chest bumping you. Thought you were in the head cover. <laughs> and she's trying to put the head wrap on you. What the hell is this? Right. You walk down the hallway, and she walked down the hallway. You got to move out her way. Right, you got to move out her way, right. 
Read on. <laughs> the wickedness of a woman changeth her face. You can see when a woman becomes wicked, her countenance will change. Yes. Now, again, with that spirit of hatred, she will kill the royal seed of God. This Jezebel-like spirit, she will kill the elect of God. They despise anyone, any man that stands up for righteousness, any man that stands up for the Most High. Any man that, right, any man that's against her lover, the devil. <laughs> Second Kings verse 11, chapter 11 verse 1. And when Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead. Her son had gotten put to death by Jehu. Mm -hmm. Jehu went from the kingdom of Israel to the kingdom of Judah and put wicked people to death. Mm -hmm. So now he had to kill her son. Watch this. She arose and destroyed all the seed royal. royal. So now, let me ask y'all a question. Do y'all think it was just, she was, oh, she killed the royal seed only because her son got killed? I'm gonna see who's thinking in here. Who's thinking? What other reason would she kill the elect? Because the royal seed didn't do nothing to her, but she killed them. Why? Zeph. She killed them because they were next in line for the throne. Right, she killed them because the royal seed was next in line to be king. Something else follows behind that. Isaac. She wanted to rule. She wanted to rule. So when her son was in rulership, who was really ruling? She, she was. She was in a seat of authority. Her son got killed. Now the next line was the other seeds of Israel. She said, no, kill all them. I'm not losing my position. Hmm. You're not taking away my teaching privileges. That's right. <laughs> Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about, but they, they know. They know. Mm -hmm. Second, so let's read that again, I thought. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed royal. The Jehosheba, the daughter of King Joram, sister of Ahaziah, took Joash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him from among the king's sons, which were slain. And they hid him, even him and his nurse, in the bedchamber from Athaliah, so that he was not slain. So one of the kids they hid, they said, no, hide this child so she don't kill him. Because she, Athaliah was killing all the royal seed of Israel, all the elect. Go ahead. And he was with her, hid in the house of the Lord six years. And Athaliah did reign over the land. See that? This woman reigned over the land. Come on. In the seventh year, Jehida sent and fetched the rulers over hundreds with the captains and the guard and brought them to him into the house of the Lord and made a covenant with them and took an oath of them in the house of the Lord and showed them the king's son. Come on, watch this. And he commanded them saying, this is the thing that ye shall do. A third part of you that enter in on the Sabbath shall even be keepers of the watch of the king's house. And the third part shall be at the gate of Sir. And the third part at the gate behind the guard. So shall ye keep the watch of the house that it be not broken down. And two parts of all you that go forth on the Sabbath, even they shall keep the watch of the house of the Lord about the king. And ye shall compass the king round about, every man with his weapons in his hand. And he that cometh within the ranges, let him be slain, and be ye with the king as he goeth out and as he cometh So in. they're setting up a plan. They're trying to announce, now this is seven years later. They said they, we got to announce this young man as king. But this demon, I want to say the B word, this demon is going to come in with her men and try to put him to death. They said when we make the, the noise, every man in here, you better have a weapon. Anybody come through those doors with weapons, put them to death. Because a man's going to sit on the throne, not that hole. We don't. And the captains over the hundreds did according to all things that Jehida, the priest, commanded. And they took every man his men that were to come in on the Sabbath with them that should go out on the Sabbath. And came to Jehida, the priest. And to the captains over hundreds did the priest give King David spears and shields that were in the temple of the Lord. And the guard stood every man with his weapons in his hand round about the king. From the right corner of the temple to the left corner of the temple, along by the altar and the temple. And he brought forth the king's son and put the crown upon him and gave him the testimony. And they made him king and anointed him. And they clapped their hands and said, God save the king. And when Athaliah heard the noise of the God and of the people, she came to the people and to the temple of the Lord. And when she looked, behold, the king stood by a pillar as the manner was, and the princes and the trumpet, trumpeters by the king. And all the people of the land rejoiced and blew with trumpets. And Athaliah rent her clothes and cried, Treason! 
Treason! <laughs> but Jehida, the priest, commanded the captains of the hundreds, the officers of the host, and said unto them, Have her fought without the ranges, and him that followeth her, kill with the sword. It, grab that hoe! And put it to death, and any nigga that's following her, kill him too. That's what was going down. I like this history, come on. For the priest had said, let her not be slain in the house of the Lord. And they laid hands on her. And she went by the way by the which the horses came into the king's house, and there was she slain. They put her to death, and any man that followed her, they put to death. Now that's heavy. Watch this. Go to 1 Corinthians 11 and well. I'm going to see who's thinking. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now, y'all y'all probably thinking in your mind, some of y'all, maybe y'all online, it's a, why are they so passionate about this subject? Why are they? Because they, they, there's some real heat coming on, from, coming through the video, coming from those microphones. Sound like some real heat coming up. You want to know the reason why we're so passionate about what we, what we, especially this particular subject? Because it's BS like this that keeps us from getting blessings. It's BS like this here that keeps the kingdom away from us. Right. And until we can get this foolishness on lock, we're going to remain in Babylon. That's the reason why we're, we're tired of serving captivity. Right. We're tired of getting being called nigger and being disrespected. We're tired of that. We're tired of that. Aren't you black men tired of that? Aren't you brothers tired of that? Raise your hand and say hi. Oh. That's what I'm talking about. Okay? We're tired of that. I want to share something real quick. Ace that said earlier about Mama's boy. Get 2 Chronicles 22, verse 2 and 3. About Ahaziah, why the most I put him to death. Forty and two years old was Ahaziah when he began to reign. And he reigned one year in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Athaliah, the daughter of Omri. That was Ahab's um, son. Uh, he also Papa. walked in the ways of the house of Ahab. For his mother was his counselor to do wickedly. That's why. Mm. He was a mama's boy. I gave it earlier. Mm. He was a mama's boy. For his mother was his counselor to do wickedly. That's, we, we that's that confusion. Uh -huh. That's that confusion earlier about no damn queens in the kingdom of heaven. Revelations 2 verse 20. Notwithstanding. I have a, 18, I'm sorry. Verse 18. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira. The word Thyatira is Greek. It means what? Daughter. Daughter. Go ahead. Right. These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. So this is that black man, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, speaking. Go ahead. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Remember in Asia Minor, which is in Greece, there were seven Israelite camps from the time of the Greeks, okay? So now, this is one of them. Christ is addressing the church, the Israelites in Thyatira. Watch what he says about it. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Is this Jezebel the same Jezebel in the book of Kings? Uh, you. No, not physically, it's the spirit. Okay, why are you saying no? How do you know it's not? Because it, um, that woman and Jezebel was doing the time of um, the book of Kings. Right, which was like hundreds of years early and she was put to death. Mm -hmm. So it's a spirit in the church. Thank you. Read again, I thought. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a pro prophetess. When you hear sisters jump up, like jumped up in our midst and said, I'm a prophetess. That's a spirit of a Jezebel. Yes, sir. Because she's trying to acquire a title, a position that is not hers. Now, there were prophetesses all through the Bible. But guess what? They didn't have to stand up and say, I am a prophetess. When she opened her mouth to her husband or something, it was evident the Spirit of God was dealing with her. Okay, come on. Thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach. To teach. What's wrong with that? Let's get 1 Timothy 2.11. Let's get that one. Because somebody, what is wrong with her teaching the men? Now their role is to, to deal with the children, okay? And be an example to the other sisters. That's their job, like it says in Titus. 1 Timothy 2 verse 11. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, 
nor to usurp authority over the man. Read that again. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection, but I suffer not a woman to teach. Revelation 2 and 20 again. All right. First, uh, Revelations 2 verse 20. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Which was the same thing back during the time of Adam and Eve. Eat things sacrificed unto idols. Commit fornication, spiritual and physical. That's why some of these spirits, they, they leave up out of here like we have seen and says, first thing they do, I want a divorce! And then they go get another man. What's that called when a woman divorces her husband and gets another man? Adultery. Adultery. And that's what we see on the rise in Israel. Come on. And I gave her space to repent of and, her fornication. And I gave, Christ said, I gave her space to repent of her fornication. That same thing that happened up in here. We gave space to repent of their fornication. Go ahead. And she repented not. Those Jezebel spirits rarely ever repent. Yep. It's a stronghold in their minds. Go ahead. Behold, I will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her. Any man or woman is following her. That's what it's talking about, committing adultery with her. Into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death. You see what Christ said? The loving Jesus Christ said, I will kill her children with death. Meaning anybody that's following her. That's what we read in Kings about Athaliah. They said, open the doors. Any man that comes in here following Athaliah, kill them. That's what Elijah did with the prophets of Baal. Kill all those men that's following her. Mm -hmm. Kill them. Those men, are, they can't be used by God. Their minds are destroyed. That's why we tell a lot of y'all, we don't want to hear what you're thinking. We don't care. That's spiritually killing you right there. Letting you know we don't, you're, you're not, we don't want to hear your thoughts. Some of y'all just got to shut up. Because the thoughts are not your thoughts at all. The thoughts are Satan. Mm -hmm. Satan speaking through you. Like I always talk about uh, lava, you with me? That's satellite. Okay? The thoughts of the man that's in charge is speaking through you. And speaking through them, then you ain't speaking at all. Right. That's all we hear is what there is what they put in your head for you to speak. Verse twenty three. Verse twenty three. Watch this. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am He which searcheth the reins and the hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. So Christ is going to give unto every one of us according to our works. You brothers follow a woman, you going to get according to your works. You going to get put to death. You let a woman murmur in your ear and twist your thoughts, you're going to get put to death. Go ahead. But unto you I say, and unto the rest of Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine. As many as have not this doctrine. What doctrine? Following the Jezebel spirit. Following the woman. Come on. And which have not known the depths of Satan. And which have not known. The, what does that mean? What does that imply? The depths of Satan. That there's what? There's levels. There's levels in Satan. You follow, that's another level. You follow a man following a woman. That's a, no, that's a deep level. That's why it's hard to come up out of that thing. That's why I said it's an abomination. That's why I was back here shaking my head listening to that thing. Elder. That, that's on another level of Satan. Elder. And for you to think that it's about the Bible, you to be holding the Bible, talking about the Bible is appreciating that, the Bible is going along with that. Where in the Bible does it say to do that? And all we're reading is. is Total condemnation. I'm going to show you. I'm going to give you. We're about to close out. But I'm going to show you an example of what King David did. Go to 1 Kings 1. Can I used to always go over this with me? And I was looking at it. I said, you know what? That is 100% on point. 1 Kings chapter 1. We're going to start at verse 11. I'm going to show you. I'm, uh, King David stood up before Israel. And he let them know that the Most High spoke to him. And that Solomon was to be the next king. Now. David gets old. I'm filling the gaps for y'all. David gets old. He's on his bed. He's, he's about to go. Mm -hmm. One of David's other sons decides he wants to be king. Now, Adonijah. 1 Kings chapter 1 verse 11. 1 yeah. Kings chapter 1 verse 11. I want y'all, I'm going to see who picks up on this thing. Wherefore Nathan spake unto Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, saying, Hast thou not heard that Adoniah, the son of Haggith, doth reign, and David our Lord knoweth it not? 
Now therefore come let me, I pray thee, give thee counsel that thou mayest save thine own life and the life of thy son Solomon. So Nathan the prophet tells Bathsheba, let me give you counsel to save your life and the life of Solomon. Go ahead. Go and get thee in unto King David and say unto him, that is not, um, this not thou, my lord, O king, swear unto thine handmaid, saying, Assuredly, Psalm and thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne. Why then doth Adonijah reign? Behold, while thou yet talkest there with the king, I also will come in after thee, and confirm thy words. And Bathsheba went in unto the king, unto the chamber, and the king was very old. And Abishad the Sh Shunammite ministered unto the king. And Bathsheba bowed and did obeisance, obeisance unto the king. And the king said, What wouldest thou? And she said unto him, My lord, thou swearest by the Lord thy God unto thine handmaid, saying, Assuredly, Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne. And now behold, Adonijah reigneth, and now, my lord the king, thou knowest it not. And he hath slain oxen and fat cattle and sheep in abundance, and have called all the sons of the king, and Abiathar the priest, and Joab the captain of the host, but Solomon thy servant hath he not called. And thou, my lord, O king, the eyes of all Israel are upon thee, that thou shouldest tell them who shall sit on the throne of my lord the king after him. Otherwise it shall come to pass, when my lord the king shall sleep with his fathers, that I and my son Solomon shall be counted offenders. So he says, so if you die, when you die in Adonijah's king, me and your son Solomon shall be counted as offenders. What does that mean? Enemies of the state, which means they would be what? Put to death. Killed. Read on. Watch this. And lo, while she yet talked with the king, Nathan the prophet also came in. Pay close attention to this. Read that verse again, 22. And lo, while she yet talked with the king, Nathan the prophet also came in. And they told the king, saying, Behold, Nathan the prophet. And when he was come in before the king, he bowed himself before the king with his face to the ground. And Nathan said, My lord, O king, hast thou said Adonijah shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne? For he has gone down this day, and have slain oxen and fat cattle and sheep in abundance, and have called all the king's sons and the captains of the host, and a bi-thought of priest. And behold, they eat and drink before him, and say, God save King Adonijah. But me, even my, me thy servant, and Zadok the priest, and Benaiah the son of Jehida, and thy servant Solomon, have he not called? Is this thing done by my lord the king? And thou hast not showed it unto thy servant, who should sit on the throne of my lord the king after him. Then King David answered and said, Call me Bathsheba. And she came into the king's presence and stood before the king. Stop right there. What happened? Uh, what happened? I'm going to see which one of you men is thinking. Azariah. Well, she did what she was told. In the Nobody can hear him. She did what she was told, what, what she was told to do in the beginning. And then she stepped away and let the, and let the men talk. And then she was called and then she came back in. What I want y'all to that's correct. Who's going to add to that? When Bathsheba was explaining the uh, situation that Nathan had commanded her to, uh, to tell King David, uh, King David didn't uh, make any judgments immediately based off of what Bathsheba said. Right. So when Nathan came, he heard Nathan's uh, counsel, and then he acted upon it. See, you brothers, you, you men got to peep that. He wasn't going on just what his wife said. Yeah, because what? Women will talk and get emotional, and sometimes they exaggerate the situation. And what they're talking about ain't what's not really, is not what's really going down. He said, uh, bring Nathan and let me hear what he got to say. Nathan comes to dinner and says, okay, now I understand. Okay, bring my wife back in here now. Some of you brothers, like we've had in the past, listen to their wife. And she could be 100% wrong and cause chaos in the church. Yes. You notice that. Uh, Nathan, even though he know that in the spirit, David would not take you to that. Mm -hmm. He said, right after you talk, I'm going to come and confirm it. Mm -hmm. He knew that yep. that was not a custom in Israel. Right. right, that's the point. He knew that was not a custom in right. Israel. Right. Some of you women, some of you brothers, take your wife's word as gospel, and she's setting you up for a fall. Okay? What your wife said? My wife said it. That was a brother. We don't want to hear what your wife said. What a brother? What's, your, what's going on here? <laughs> what is going on? That's how we got to operate. Because they exaggerate and let emotions guide them. We can't be like that. Sorry, sisters. I know you're hot right now, but it's all right. You're going to be okay. Read on. We're going on 31. Then King David answered and said, Call me Bathsheba. And she came into the king's presence and stood before the king. And the king swore and said, 
as the Lord liveth, that have redeemed my soul out of all distress, even as I swear unto thee by the Lord God of Israel, saying, Assuredly, Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne in my stead. Even so will I certainly do this day. Then Bathsheba bowed with her face to the earth and did reverence to the king and said, Let my lord King David live forever. Let my lord, let my lord, let my... You see, there's a, uh, there's a pattern of the righteous women in Israel. That's called cool. Did she call him lord just because he was king? No. No. We just read that in 1 Peter 3. That was a sign of respect. Yep. Okay. So, from there, 1 Timothy 3 and 5. We're almost done, brothers. 1 Timothy 3 and 5. This is one of my favorite scriptures. <laughs> I love this scripture here. Oh, you mealy mouth confused Negro men. 1 Timothy 3 and 5. Now, it's, now Bathsheba was right, and he, but David wasn't just going by what she said. That's the point I just wanted y'all to see. Some of y'all go home and say, I ain't never supposed to listen to you. That ain't what we're saying. <laughs> Hear it, put it in your pocket, and go hear what the brother said next. Get the full story. And, and she said this, and she did that to me, and she... Sister, that's not what happened. You, then you get the truth, like, oh, okay. And when it was over, she didn't go back to him and say, what did he tell you? Right. <laughs> First Timothy 3 and 5. First Timothy 3 verse 5. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall we take care of the church of God? See that? The Most High can't use you as a leader if you cannot guide your house. Revelation 14 and 4. We'll close out with this one. Revelation 14 verse 4. These are they which were not defiled with women. Brothers, we are not to be defiled by women. And it's saying women going back to Genesis. Philosophies, doctrines often come through women. Read that verse again. That's what over the brothers. These That's are they right. which are not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These are redeemed from among men. From among who? Men. From among who? Men. Go ahead. Being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. Go ahead. And in their mouth was found no guile. No deceit. We're not going to use trickery or deceit. We're going to come straight with the Bible. This is what the scriptures say. What, that's why it says, um, Isaiah 58, about spare not. Oh, I don't, want to, I don't want her to get angry with me. So I'm going to twist the scriptures to get my way. No, we are not to be like that. Whoever's twisting scriptures to get their way, read that again. And in their mouth was found no guile. There has to be no guile in your mouth. So what? She gets mad. Brother, she's going to take me to court. So let her take you to court. She might raise the child support. Read it again. And in their mouth was found no guile. No deceit. Like I always say, we got to stop a hope.